First style that we're going to work with is um, a panko fried shrimp. Very simple, very easy. I've got my means right here for breading. I call it the dry okay. wet dry process. So dry is flour, the wet is egg wash. Egg wash, and another dry is it's our Japanese panko breading. What's a substitute for panko breading? Would it? Just... Oh, I mean you can use cornmeal, uh, just re regular old fashioned flour, seasoned. Um, I particularly like this one. It gives it a better crunch. It's more lighter, yeah. and like I said, if you get the kids involved with the kitchen and stuff like that, kind of a cool different breading so that you know they get they get the full experience and they enjoy themselves as okay, well. Okay, good. So we have our shrimp. We deheaded them. It's important to devein them, absolutely, right, to get that out of there. We don't want that. You don't want that in there. Right. You don't want to see that. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Um, Pretty easy. Just go ahead and lightly dust that uh, shrimp in that seasoned flour. Make sure you coat it because um, this is going to be the beginning of the glue is what I like to call it. Once this flour goes into that egg wash, make sure it's coated nicely. It yep. becomes kind of gluish right here. Yep. And then all you do is just take it in the panko and you want to just lightly push it down. You really don't want to beat up the shrimp. All right, until it's nice and coated. And uh, so you don't grind it absolutely in there. not. You really destroy that shrimp doing it that way. Nice. All right, so we've got a nice breaded shrimp right here, um, and then we're ready for uh, cooking in the uh, in the little fry daddy. Okay. So we've got it. Like I said, you want to slowly drop it. A lot of people do like fried shrimp with some tartar sauce. Okay. So uh, we're gonna cook this baby up, and then we're gonna go ahead and make some old-fashioned tartar sauce. You can hear him sizzling. He's, he's definitely sizzling. See how that nice golden brown is coming on? It's nice golden brown. It's probably um, three quarters of the way done. What we're gonna do is just pull it out, let it drain. It's the cooking process is still going. There's a lot of oil on there. It's still hot. So we have a little drip tray right here. We're gonna let it rest and um, we're gonna go ahead and venture over to our tartar sauce. We've got some simple ingredients here. We've got our, our black pepper. Okay. I've got good old Larry. Larry. He's still in there, the Larry, Larry seasoned salt. Gotta have Larry um, in there. I've got some diced roasted peppers. Uh, some diced pickle, and uh, a little bit of diced onion, and then we also have some whole grain Dijon mustard. It, it gives it a nice little kick. You don't want to go and overpower it. Basically, this is just a combined everything, mix it together, and then call it a day. So there's no rules here. You Absolutely just kinda, not. You just close your eyes, pour, and then oh, that's it. I love it. Let's do it. Nice and simple. Um, you don't want to overdo it with the pepper, so about a pinch of salt and a pinch of pepper to give it just a little bit of flavor. A little bit of lottery. Um, I've got about uh, maybe like two ounces of diced roasted pepper. We're just going to go ahead and throw that in there. Um, same thing with the pickle. Two ounces of diced pickle. Um, you don't want to go too much on the onion, just a little bit. So I would say just about a half ounce of a diced white onion. You can use red onion. Uh, red onion might get it, give it a little sweeter flavor. Mm. And then I've got some whole grain Dijon mustard, which, like I said before, you don't want to overdo it. You just want to go ahead and give it a little bit of a pinch. The last thing that we've got here is just some Worcestershire. This will give it some saltiness. That's why you don't want to overpower it with the salt. Yep. But it's just got a really nice flavor that, that goes well with the tartar sauce. Okay, so we're just going to put a little drop in there. And um, that's pretty much it. You just want to kind of blend it together. And you've got them nice, beautiful, big chunks of the roasted pepper and the mm -hmm. pickle, so you're going to get a really nice bite and crunch when you're dipping your fried shrimp, which is another nice crunch, into this really nice homemade tartar sauce. And you've just prepared a really nice dish for the family that you know they can enjoy. The kids will love it. And that's pretty much They'll it. They'll be impressed that you made it. Absolutely. Like that's, you're, you're halfway there. And you know, that's that you what you know, this is all about, basically, is just how simple can you make it, but making it taste good and making it look nice. So. so I've heard when the seafood floats in the grease, it's done. Is that true or not true? Uh, it's, it's absolutely true. Um, it's not just with seafood. You're cooking chicken, frying chicken. Um, it's definitely going to float to the top uh, when it's completely cooked throughout. So you think we're about ready? Okay, because I know when when to pull it is a critical time. If you pull too early, you've got raw shrimp. You, you're bad. Yeah. You pull too nice. late, you've got tough shoe leather. Is what shoe I like leather. To pull it. Yep. So we're gonna say pull them. I think we're at the right stage right now, where they're nice wow. golden I love brown. love frying. It's so just kinetic. Absolutely. Okay, so our shrimp are done. They are perfect. So what do, what do we do now? Um, we've got a plate right here with okay. a paper towel. Uh, it'll absorb any of the extra grease that is lying on the shrimp. So you want to try and get all that excess grease off of it. Keep the grease in the fryer. That's where it belongs. So this has been sitting here a while. Absolutely. We've you can hear that. They sound perfect. They really do sound good. They're talking. They're talking. Okay. So you've got some beautiful shrimp right there. Like I said, just maybe pat them a little bit. We've already made that tartar sauce, which is that old-fashioned tartar sauce nice. that we did before. Um, and I've got some, just some spring mix, just to give it a little color on the plate. We're going to put that spring mix right here. You've got your tartar sauce, 
And then, I mean, you can assemble it any which way you want, but just to make... I like to go in a kind of a pyramid, if you... You, you want a pyramid? Yeah. Would you like to assemble? Yeah, I'll do like a... Let's do it. Let's do like a... My sister was a cheerleader, so let's just do something Look at like that. that right there. Um, sure. We've got some lemon. Yep. It's fresh lemon. You're obviously going to definitely serve fried shrimp with fresh lemon. And then the last but not least is just to make it look a little bit more upscale, I've got this thing called a microplane. Have you ever seen one of these before? I have never. It just gets a really thin, fine slice um, on your zest. But if you were to just take uh, it... Wait a minute, on my zest? On your you zest mean? of a lemon or a lime. You know how you have that rind that's on the outside? You do want to just try and take a little bit of that top layering off. And like I said, you just throw it on the plate. So the outer part is Absolutely. the zest. Absolutely, and you just go ahead and throw a couple sprinkles of that here and there. And uh, you really jazz the plate up. Nice. And that looks pretty good, huh? That does look good. So this is ready to be eaten. That's ready to go. So, let's see what we got here. You can hear that crunch, huh? Oh that's, man. It's pretty good, huh? It's still pretty hot, but it's pretty dang good. <laughs> That is really, really good. Good deal. Ben, what do you think? That's pretty good. Worthy? Worthy. I would say it's worthy.